hope you're doing really well. Today I wanted to share with you a little behind the scenes of what life as a food photographer looks like. I know some of you might be curious as to what this job actually entails. It's something that maybe is not very well known to a lot of people. So I really wanted to share with you a little bit of my step-by-step -step creative process and share with you some images of you know what a day shooting and editing looks like for me. I know when I personally started my food photography journey, I was really interested in seeing these types of videos and to kind of understand a little bit what a food photographer does and what you know their setup looks like at the beginning, during and after a shoot. And that's really what I want to do today. I really want to take you behind the scenes and share with you a little bit of my world and um, what everything looks like. And so I really hope you enjoy it. And so let's get started with the pre-shooting. Typically, on the days preceding my shoots, I like to go on to Pinterest to search for inspiration in terms of styling that I like. I will type in the name of the recipe that I'm planning on shooting. In this case, it'll be a shea pudding. And I will look through the images that are shot by other food photographers or bloggers. And with the images that I like the most, I'll screenshot and I'll add them to a note that I'll keep near me when I shoot. And this will just give me an idea in terms of the styling that I personally really like or the mood that I want to create. And once I've done uh, selecting all the images that I really like, I will go ahead and create a grocery list of the items I need to get in order to create the recipe that I'm planning on shooting. Another tool that I started using in the last couple of months has been sketching out my compositions. These sketches are by no means complicated, they're incredibly simple, they just uh, illustrate where my different props and ingredients are going to be placed as well as the areas of focus and which areas are going to be blurry. I also like to use this little planning tool to uh, choose which uh, angles I'm going to be using so close up or SO stands for straight on. Once I've found my inspiration, wrote down my grocery list and drawn out my composition, I will head out to the shops aka the grocery stores uh, to buy some of my ingredients. Honestly, I'm very lucky to be living in a neighborhood where there's a multitude of grocery stores. There's at least five that are within walking distance, including this one, which is one of my favorite ones for its very cheap prices. After some grocery shopping, it's time to prep these strawberry and rhubarb shea pudding parfaits. For this particular shoot, I didn't really write down a recipe or follow one, I just kind of improvised based on some knowledge that I've had from recipes I've created in the past that are similar, but if I was creating a recipe for my blog or for a client, I would make sure to write down every single one of the measurements as well as the step-by-step -step process on how to achieve the final result. Another thing is that the prep uh, for a shoot can last anywhere between 30 minutes to 3 hours depending on if I'm creating a recipe for myself or for a client, I might have to test the recipe a couple of times before I get the really final result that I'm looking for and also depending on how complex the recipe is, sometimes the recipe is very easy like in the case of this shea pudding that doesn't take that long to prep but sometimes it takes a little bit longer. On the day of my shoot, it's pretty easy to gather all of my props just because, as you remember, I already selected which props I wanted to use so it's kind of easy to just gather them all up together and start shooting. In this case, I am using two backdrops, one for the back, one for the bottom. I'm also using a reflector to bounce my light. You can notice that I have my camera set on the tripod because I almost always use a tripod to shoot. It just makes it just allows me to make sure that my photos are nice and in focus and always crisp. I'm also using a foam board to block some of the light to create some nice interesting shadows in the back. And now it's time to assemble my shea puddings. One spoonful at a time. Notice the little cleanup. Gotta make sure your glasses are clear, 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 guys. Super, super important. Finally, I am garnishing my shea pudding with some fresh strawberries as well as some puffed quinoa for a little bit of texture. 
and you'll notice that I'm moving my camera up and down and changing its position around a little bit because I'm looking at my computer that is actually connected to my camera it's tethered and this allows me to have a good overview of what my scene looks like I'm also switching lenses a few times that you will notice throughout this video and that is because different lenses allow you to have different types of images depending on whether I'm trying to shoot a scene that is more close up or more further away or even with the same scene sometimes I like a shot that is wider and a shot that is more focused on the subject itself. Here I am moving my camera upward in order to get a three quarter view angle. Guys, don't be afraid to move your camera around even if you had decided on some predetermined angles. You never know what type of shot you might get so just be creative and experiment with your camera angles. I am also moving my form boards around in order to manipulate my light and to block some of it out to create some nice dramatic shadows, although my photography is not all that dramatic compared to some other photographers out there. Light is extremely, extremely important for food photographers. I personally always shoot in natural light. I have never shot with artificial light. I personally like natural light a lot, but maybe one day I'll learn artificial light to just allow me to shoot at different times of the day and not only rely on the power of the sun. Another thing that you might have noticed is that I tend to move the same elements over and over and over again. That's because I'm just trying to get my positioning right and sometimes it can take quite a few tries. Let me tell you, I can spend minutes and minutes and minutes over this. But in the end, it's all worth it. It just allows me to get to the image that I'm looking for. Once I have gotten the shot that I think is the winner shot, I like to take my camera off my tripod and take a few extra shots just uh, by moving freely around my subject. And also at this point, I kind of experiment creatively with other extra images. Here I am doing an image of the shea pudding being poured into the glass. And I am also doing a little photo of the puffed quinoa being poured onto the shea pudding right here. <laughs> Finally, I ended my shoot with a little hero shot of the biggest shea pudding glass surrounded by some strawberry and rhubarb compote and some more fresh strawberries. And that's a wrap, you guys. Shooting's all done. I'm really excited. I'm really happy. It all went really, really well, I think. Um, as I was shooting, I was looking at the images, and I think I got some really cool shots, and I'm really excited about it. I'm going to edit those tonight, and in the meantime, I'm actually going to first eat this little beauty, which is, by the way, the best part about being a food photographer. Um, and once I'm done that, I'm going to do the cleanup of my kitchen because my kitchen is messy. Um, when you're a food photographer, what happens is that you have to shoot the food quite quickly. Like you can't take like really, really long because the food will start changing. The colors will change. Um, in my case, in the case of the shea pudding, the fruits that are at the top are kind of acting as a weight. So they'll weigh down um, the pudding that is at the bottom. So kind of like changing its shape and look. Yeah, uh, I can't really do that much cleaning as I'm going, unfortunately. Uh, I have to do the cleaning once I'm all done. Um, but it's all good, it's all part of the job. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the cleaning, relax a little bit, have dinner, and uh, get to editing right after that. Well guys, something unfortunate happened. <laughs> I guess um, this video is gonna be a good representation of my life as a food photographer just in the sense that sometimes things go wrong so what happened is i needed to free up some space on the sd card that was in this camera that i used to shoot the photos of the shea pudding and so i put it into my camera and i deleted images that i thought were old images and it turns out i deleted all the photos i just shot this afternoon so unfortunately, I won't be able to do the complete beginning to end video of everything that I do in 
a typical day of shooting just because it doesn't really work out i don't have any images that i can shoot and edit but um, i guess it's life one thing to remember and i learned this from peter mckinnon and i did not listen to him always always transfer your photos right after the shoot from your sd card to your external drive always and you know it has to happen like that the one time you don't do it the one time that's when you delete them by mistake anyways it's life um i hope this video was still really interesting for you to watch i hope you got to see a little bit more of an insight of what my job looks like as a food photographer and also something that i didn't really think of including in this video is you know when things just don't work out it happens there are days like that and i'm so 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 thankful that the photos i shot today were not photos that i needed to shoot for a client those were just images for me for my blog to share on social media so it's not that bad now i'm just gonna share with you a little bit of my setup what it looks like um, where i edit i'm gonna share with you some of the programs that i use and yeah so let's jump right in and i'll show you exactly what it looks like this is the little setup that I have. I have a tablet right here that I use to do all of my editing. It just allows me to move faster than if I just use the trackpad on my laptop. It's my computer and Lightroom is open. Lightroom is the number one software I use to do all of my editing. I also have an external drive because my computer doesn't have that much storage on it. And yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. So this is me at my little workstation working with my little tablet that I told you I use. I'm working on Lightroom at the moment. I am pasting a preset that I had created in the past and adjusting it so that it fits well on the photo and using the brush tool as well as the gradient filter to achieve the look that I want. And usually after this point, I bring my photo into Photoshop to do the final touch-ups. Like you can see here, there is a big crack on the ice cream, a few cracks actually, that I'm just editing out. And um, that's pretty much it. So that's it guys. Uh, I hope this little video was interesting to you and it gave you a good idea of what a day in the life of a food photographer looks like, anyway, what it looks like for me. And it kind of showed you that sometimes things do go wrong. And yeah, I really wanted to share with you a little bit of the process that goes behind uh, creating photos from uh, the very beginning of the brainstorming, uh, the getting of the ingredients, the prepping, as well as the shooting and editing <laughs> that technically didn't happen today. But usually my day ends with an hour, uh, between one to three hours of editing. And um, yeah, I hope it was very interesting to you. And if you did really enjoy this video, just make sure to give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe and share. And uh, I'll see you very soon.